the road to your first 100 kilo snatch is one of the most significant milestones in any lifter's career, few PBs will feel as satisfying as your first triple digit lift. For the purpose of this video, we just want to be clear that the advice still stands for females looking for their first bodyweight snatch, which is generally the equivalent of the 100 kilo snatch. We often talk about doing a needs analysis on your performance, regardless of what sport you do or what area of performance you're looking to improve on. If we were to do a needs analysis on the 100 kilo snatch, we'll see a couple of distinct areas emerging that we need to be on top of to hit our goal. The first is skill, the second is strength, and the third is programming on how to get there. Let's look at skill first as it's the most important place to begin as a lifter looking to hit the big 100. When thinking about your snatch, it'll pay dividends to look at your technique through the scope of long-term development. The snatch technique you use to hit 100 can be the same technique you use to snatch 120 kilos or more. You might be able to hit 100 kilos with a horrendous technique, but it certainly won't allow you room to progress after. What often happens is lifters will hit the 80 to 90 kilo mark with very subpar technical parameters and they're unable to progress further regardless of strength improvements. So what technical model should you use for the 100 kilo snatch? The most standardized classic model is where you should start. The model that the vast majority of national federations will teach their coaches and athletes from day one. This is the classic modern day European tactical model originally solidified and quantified by the Soviets and then spread throughout the world and used by many of the greatest lifters. The nuance may look different, but the parameters they laid out are the same. Look to lifters like Nico Muller, Lasha, Nino, Gabriel St. Crane, Guo and many, many more. A trap we often see lifters fall into in the early stages is looking for a special way or a different way of doing things. But I implore you, please do not fall into this fallacy. In the sport of weightlifting, you want to be normal. You don't want any special quirks. You just want to follow the well-trodden, streamlined path to success rather than being different. Very often we see lifters mirror themselves on lifters without giving any objective thought on whether this is the best way or simply because they want it to be so. I really want to emphasize this point as this is one of the biggest hurdles we see lifters without coaches encounter when trying to break into the intermediate stages of lifting. They'll watch a favorite lifter of theirs and notice a strange quirk, then decide to use this technical oddity until it becomes ingrained in their base motor patterns. This generally manifests itself in squat jerking for the clean and jerk, but for the snatch it might look like a very low hip start position, shoulders too far behind the bar, or maybe they'll remove any appreciable level of foot movement. Not only does this not work in the long run, but it rarely works well in the short term. Two great places to start your journey in technique are the books The Training of the Weightlifter by R.A. Roman and The Trials of a Professional Weightlifter by Merrick Kurkowski. Your own individual issues will need to be corrected, but if you begin to identify these issues from the cheat sheet of the classic model, you'll find you can improve areas of your technique by referencing the textbook technique. Does your start position conform to the start position taught in these textbooks? Does your first pull move in the way it's taught? for classic technique. If you can begin to work this thought process into your training mindset, you'll set yourself up for a lifetime of improvement and a lot less heartache. Next, we must move to an undeniable part of weightlifting, the strength needed to snatch 100 kilos. While weightlifting may hang off your tactical prowess, this technique is only expressing your strength. The better technique you have, the higher percentage of strength you can express, but if you do not have the necessary strength, then you simply cannot lift it. The key strength movement your first 100 kilo snatch revolves around is your back squat. Different lifts at different points in your career will impact many things, but none more so than what you can back squat when attempting a 100 kilo snatch. For males, this range lies between 160 kilos to 180 kilos. In general, what we see is lifters tend towards the higher end of this range on average, now the important thing here is to not rush for a 180 kilo back squat. This won't speed up the timeline any faster in the long run. What you need to try to do is progress your technique alongside your back squat strength. If you push your strength at the expense of your skill work, you'll simply have to work on your technique at a later point. There's a couple of variations in auxiliary lifts that we need to look at when working for our 100 kilo snatch. The emphasis placed on these is important, but not at the expense of your full snatch training and squat work. A 75 to 80 kilo power snatch is a good indicator of the potential for the 100 kilo snatch. Any less, and it might be worth looking at why this is. Is your technique drastically lacking, or are you on the other end of the spectrum and you're power snatching 95 kilos? For female lifters, the power snatch should be about 80% in the range of your goal snatch. A 110 kilo plus snatch balance is a good indicator of overhead strength. If you find yourself in the position where 100 kilo or less snatch balance is crippling you, then it's very likely it's worth your time investing in more overhead work for the snatch. As a rule of thumb, snatch balancing your current or desired 1RM for a triple 
is a good place to leave the snatch balance. Finally, a low hang snatch of 80 to 85 kilos is a good indicator of positional strength. Generally, what we like to see is your hang variations being approximately 90% of your lift from the floor. But for newer lifters, we often see them get caught up in the variations and not able to transfer this to the full snatch. Just notice we didn't say high hang or above the knee hang snatch. This is for two reasons. One, beginners are notorious for butchering a high hang snatch into something that's so far removed from a snatch that it makes for an upsetting time as a coach. The second is the high hang snatch is generally easier to hit big numbers with and can be a crutch for a lifter. A lifter may look to hang snatch something before a snatch from the floor, thus adding a psychological barrier to hitting PBs, or worse, to become emotionally negative over their inability to match their hang snatch and their lift from the floor. Rep maxes from the floor are something you very much need to stay away from. I know we've mentioned a lot of things that you shouldn't do so far, but it's often the mistakes that people make that hold them back from making their goal rather than the things they do right. A frequent mistake made is lifters will push for a 2 and 3 RM but find it doesn't transfer over to a new 1 RM. Typically a 2 RM or 3 RM will predict about 10 or 15 kilos more respectively, assuming technique is good and reasonable programming. But for beginner lifters, they often have difficulty transferring this to their 1 RM as they will use a technique that is vastly different from their desired 1 RM to hit this new rep max. Furthermore, Beginner lifters will often chase rep maxes for too long and essentially lose the skill of practicing heavy singles. The next area of focus should be mobility and flexibility. It's an unfortunate reality that many lifters who have the necessary skill and strength to put a 100 kilo snatch overhead are usually hampered by a complete lack of mobility or an utter abundance of it. Take, for example, the lifter mentioned earlier who can power snatch 95% or more of their 1RM. It's likely that this inflation of power snatch 1RM is due to a lack of range of motion in either the hips, ankles, shoulders or T-spine. And no matter how strong the lifter becomes or how much they butcher their technique, they'll never truly achieve the 100 kilo snatch because the compensatory tactics which work to hide their crimes of mobility will simply not work at heavier weights. We can't just expect to kick the wrist back more and more to accommodate for poor shoulder mobility or set the hips back and incline the torso forward to make up for poor ankle mobility and not expect it to cause issues later on. The nature of these compensations is that as the weights get heavier, we need to compensate more. So if I have poor shoulder mobility and I kick my wrist back by five degrees to go from 70 kilos to 80 kilos, it's likely that the shoulders will tense up more at the heavier weights to go from 80 kilos to 90 kilos, I'll have to adjust my position once again. On the opposite side of the coin then, we have the hyper flexible athletes or hyper mobile athletes. These lifters will often find themselves pulling under very heavy attempts, possibly even securing the load overhead and then not being able to stand up. This obviously perplexes them and oftentimes they put their focus in the wrong area. Usually, the culprit here will be an imbalance between their flexibility and their mobility. So they're flexible enough to fall into a position, but not strong enough to maintain it or to move on to the next position in the lift. They essentially can't control themselves through that range of motion. So what should you do? Well, the first thing you do is check for flexibility. You should see, can you sit in the bottom position of the snatch? See, can you sit in the start position of the snatch? If there are any issues here, you should address them immediately. You must first be able to achieve the position before then moving from position to position. Then, having assessed the flexibility, you should see, are you mobile enough to control yourself in these positions and in these transitions? So can you snatch with a PVC pipe or a timber dowel? Can you sit into a perfect overhead squat while not under load? Making improvements in flexibility and mobility is incredibly easy, but it takes a long time. Oftentimes people are disparaged due to the fact that they will train to become more flexible or more mobile. They'll put a lot of effort into that training. And then after two or three weeks of achieving the necessary position they'll stop the mobility or flexibility work and that position will immediately leave them when you're training your flexibility or mobility it is the exact same as training to become stronger or more aerobically fit or anything along those lines it must be worked 
towards, then it must be maintained. The maintenance work for this level of mobility or flexibility is far less than the initial workload, but it is significant all the same. The final piece in this large jigsaw puzzle of the 100 kilo snatch is your programming. Specifically, the frequency of lifts within that program. So in terms of frequency, you need to obviously be snatching every week, ideally snatching twice per week, and if you can afford it, you should have a third session with some type of specifically programmed snatch derivative or complex in it. Any less than once or twice per week, it's going to be very difficult to hone your technique well enough to have a really sharp snatch at heavier weights. It will also be difficult to get enough practice to fix your errors and finalize your technique. And realistically, when we're going for the 100 kilo snatch, it tends to be such a large milestone that you will be pushing those last few kilos. In standard terms, when we're looking for a two and a half kilo PB or a five kilo PB, we'll often follow our program to a T, then we'll expect that 5% increase or 10% increase in 1RM, and we won't usually push beyond that. But because of the nature of the 100 kilo snatch, when we get up close to 90, 95 kilos, we keep pushing, we might prolong that taper slightly, and then you end up falling into these issues like we've mentioned before. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any questions, get in touch with us.